I'd hate to think what could have happened to him had the flying doctor not been here. You've got to be there to feel what you, you feel in your heart for him. However awful the um, accident or the scene that we're going to, they're always so grateful and happy to see us because I think they just think, great, the flying doctors are here. The one that's there, they're there, ready for you, they get you. And then if you're if not there, you'll be gone, I tell you. This was my goal. This is all I ever wanted to do in aviation. Most Australians live in heavily populated coastal regions, clustered together in the safety of numbers, with first-class medical help only minutes away. But there's far more to this island continent than beaches and suburbs. The inland is a vast region where hundreds of thousands of people live, work, and now more than ever, travel. How do Australians ensure health, well-being and peace of mind so far from the sophisticated medical help that most of us take for granted? It's thanks to the care provided by the dedicated crews of the Royal Flying Doctor Service. I was flown up to Adelaide by the RFDS and I was absolutely amazed. They were so supportive. I was scared. Um, Simon was able to come with us. I was going to have a baby at 26 weeks and I didn't realise that babies that young lived. <laughs> I mean, it's happened to me twice and if it wasn't for them, we would not have our girls because our girls, we wouldn't have got to Adelaide in time to have them. And, well, Sarah in particular, they told us we probably shouldn't have her. But look at her now. They really are a godsend. <laughs> From its 27 bases across the nation, the Royal Flying Doctor Service links the huge waiting room that is rural Australia with medical facilities and major metropolitan hospitals 24 hours a day, every day of the year. The Royal Flying Doctor Service operates a fleet of 50 aircraft fitted with the latest medical equipment. This fleet provides airborne intensive care covering 80% of Australia's landmass. All the sophisticated life-saving technology that you'd expect in a major hospital. Strangers are always welcome in a lonely land, but this is a doubly welcome visit, for the plane brings the flying doctor, and these are magic words in Australia's outback. But no longer is the service just for the people of the outback. Flying Doctor Territory is just an hour's flying time from most of our capital cities. 200. The RFDS even transfers patients living in metropolitan areas to hospitals in other cities around Australia for urgent organ donor transplants and other specialist procedures. Living here in Adelaide, when Zachary was born, he needed emergency surgery. And after 10 days in Adelaide, we needed to get to Melbourne. The Royal Flying Doctors took Zach over to Melbourne and I can tell you now, without them, Zach wouldn't be here today. And the service is also becoming more involved with the ever-increasing number of tourists visiting Australia's outback. Like a lot of city folk, I never thought we'd need the use of the Flying Doctor service. But on a recent trip out west, I was proven wrong when we rolled a vehicle four times between Cobar and Wilcannia. The ambulance came out from Wilcannia and conveyed us to the local hospital. And in the meantime, they'd radioed ahead to the Flying Doctor base in Broken Hill and arranged for an aircraft to come up and evacuate us to the Broken Hill Hospital. We will always be grateful for the work that they did, not only for us, but for all people in the bush, because you never know when they will be there to back you up. Each year, the RFDS flies around 20 million kilometres to attend almost a quarter of a million patients and provides over 33,000 aerial evacuations for residents, workers and travellers, in every case bringing this huge continent just a little bit closer together. As well as emergency services, the RFDS provides a comprehensive range of healthcare services, such as a 24-hour GP consultation service via radio and telephone. 
into hospital transfers for patients requiring higher levels of care. Transporting medical specialists to regional and remote areas. Operating a female GP program, providing women in rural areas with access to female doctors. Preventative health care for indigenous communities. and maintaining over 3,000 medical chests at clinics, mine sites and properties with drugs prescribed under the guidance of the flying doctor medical officers by telephone or radio. In the medical chest, 500 milligram tablets and you take one of those three times a day. And the service promotes professional training for doctors, nurses and allied health staff to address chronic shortages of medical professionals in regional and rural Australia. The RFDS touches the lives of hundreds of thousands of Australians each year. To the people in less heavily populated areas, the service means survival, emergency medical care for locals and visitors alike. And for isolated communities, it means the health services that people in cities have come to expect as their right. Well, I don't get as frightened being out here in the middle of nowhere because you can rely on the flying doctors to come in whenever you need them. I like being out in the bush uh, and I like the people that we meet. Um, and everyone's always pleased to see you when you arrive. <laughs> That's a real good thing about it, I suppose. Supporting regional health professionals is another important role of the RFDS. If you're sitting waiting for the plane to come at four o'clock in the morning to pick your patient up and you've been up all night with them, to see them lights coming is, um, is the biggest relief. With preventative health care a national priority and inadequate health standards in some outback communities, flying clinics are in huge demand, offering GP consultation, child health nursing and health education. Now, who knows someone who's been on the flying doctor here? <laughs> the voice on the end of the phone is the most amazing supportive thing that you can possibly imagine and a great deal of support for nurse practitioners. They understand what it's like to be out here, they understand what it's like to work on your own and they're very encouraging that you're doing the very, very best with what you've got. We couldn't do it without them. I certainly couldn't. Regardless of where you live, the lives of you, your friends or family could one day depend upon the high standard of aircraft that keep the service in the air. The Royal Flying Doctor Service relies heavily on the generosity of Australians to continue its essential work. It receives funding for the majority of its operational costs from government, but must meet from fundraising the balance needed for vital medical equipment and the huge cost of replacing aircraft. The flying doctors are always in need of financial support to ensure they can continue to meet their responsibility to the ever-growing number of people who call upon them for help. Australian ingenuity and hard work built the first, the largest, the most comprehensive aerial health and emergency service in the world. It started out as an idea an idea that was given wings thanks to the support of previous generations. Now, it's our turn to help. Your support will help us deliver on the promise that every Australian is brought up to believe in. The promise that help is at hand. True blue.